A few weeks ago, the spindle on my CNC router died. It was a cheap Chinese spindle, so I can't be too shocked. It lasted about two years. But I figured now's a chance to upgrade, do something a little nicer. So, cleaned off the bench after placing the order, wait a few weeks, and here it is. Let's do an unboxing. Alright, before I get started, I stole a knife from the kitchen, and that's shameful. What I really need is I need a good pocket knife. So John Grinsmo, if you're uh, if you're watching this, I need to buy a Norseman. So like, pick my name from your from your email list, and uh, no seriously, like if you're watching this, I'm not kidding. Like I need a Norseman, bad. I would totally buy one. Nothing fancy, just a Norseman. Can even be a scratch and dent. Just just one Norseman. And uh, don't tell my wife I stole that knife from the kitchen. So here we are. And uh, ta-da, it's paper. Yeah, no, no, just kidding. The paper's nice and all, don't get me wrong. Like They did a good job packaging it, but that's not what you're here for. Well, let's start out. So in the starter kit, you get uh, 35 feet of uh, uh, spindle cable. And it's a, it's a really nice uh, six conductor, um, 600 volt, 150C high quality um, cable really actually super impressed by this cable um, that's me just reading the spec off of it uh, it's 16 gauge wires um, so not bad at all um, I like how they treated the ends they they tend the ends and then they crimped and shrunk wrapped the ends that are gonna go straight in so um, good job all in all I'm actually not sure what the tend ends are for yet I think those are like future whereas the the first four actually control the spindle so that's good maybe maybe for a sensor if you have the sensor they have an open close sensor you can get also like the conduct uh, connector they use it's a really good connect uh, connector I'm not sure what it is it's not your standard kind of aviator connector you get on most most cheap spindles so uh, super impressed by that in fact I was so impressed here I want to kind of show you I'm using uh, currently the stuff I'm using is this four conduit and just it's not very bendable kind of sticky it's just not nearly as nice as the stuff that uh, that they got so you can see kind of like the curve it holds versus the curve it holds you can see how much more flexible their stuff is and you know it's just it's just a higher quality cable I'm really again can't say too many nice things about it right I hate saying can't say too many nice things but it's good stuff all right next thing here is the inverter now they they don't do some cheap off-brand inverter um, again this is a starter kit so you get a bunch of stuff so the inverter is part of that and I could have used my cheap Chinese inverter but they, they, they come with a name brand inverter, so why not? And uh, again, look, John or somebody who knows him, really seriously, like, pick my name. jhandel at gmail.com. I'm on your list. Anyways, so, right, so open this sucker up. And I was shocked at how small this thing is, right? So my inverter is easily twice as big. Maybe, maybe that, yeah, at least twice as big. It's a really small inverter. It's going to make me change how I handle my uh, my electrical box because I, I actually have a whole box just for my inverter thinking my inverter was uh, too too big to fit with my power supplies for my servos but I think I can actually get them all in one box which means I ordered too many boxes but hey you know live and learn anyways uh, nice little nice little box straightforward um, of course the instructions in the uh, multiple languages and uh, I will be actually reading them I know it's a shocker people actually read instructions I do I I freak people out by the fact that I actually read instructions so uh, RTFM is rarely an issue for me it, it does happen but it's not not always the case I was actually uh, not sure what this little box was because um, you know there's the inverter um, and uh, it's a nice little touch it's the controller for the inverter to like get your RPMs and, and do some of the menus and stuff like that so it's a little it's a programming controller, so a little more functionality, um, a little closer to what like, I have on my inverter, but I just I didn't assume it was much. Um, so yeah, I am totally like leaving the spindle for last. So you're gonna have to watch the whole thing. Um, ha ha ha, demon me. So actually, actually, uh, these are these are they give you four um, tool holders for if you're gonna get the full ATC configuration going. Like we're actually gonna like program up. Uh, location and all that jazz I haven't decided how I'm gonna handle that um, I think I want to do that I just not sure uh, how I'm gonna pull it off yet on my machine 
Um, but they're they're nice. Delrin, good quality. I think I could probably like machine some more of them now that I have some. And these are um, they give you four ER thirty two. Um, they're ER thirty two uh, ISO thirty, um, and it's a different pull stud. Now, my Skyfire has BT thirties with a forty five degree pull stud, so uh, um, I would love to be able to reuse tool holders between the two machines. So you know, not saying you have to change anything. CNC Depot, like I'm liking what I got so far, but uh, you know, I'd, I'd love it if these were BT30, if you had a BT30 and a 45 degree pull stud version. I'm just saying so that I could reuse tool holders. Um, so there's uh, four of those in the kit, and then there's four. You you tell them what four ER collets you want. I I didn't do anything crazy. I think I did um, uh, eighth. We'll do eighth quarter, three eighths, and and uh, half. Kind of your standard stuff for for cutting metal. Um, uh, so we're getting down to the bottom there. I think we got a couple more collets to pull out. They're hiding over here. There they are. Yeah. So a couple more collets, and uh, I don't think the collets are made in the U.S. The C the the, the I'm trying to read that name. IMS is the name of the collet maker. I don't know if that's a U.S. company or not. Um, and, you know, until I do run out tests and stuff, I can't really tell you how great it is. Um, all right, nothing else in there. Time to go ahead and just get rid of all the trash and get to... It's like it's like dissecting a Muppet, right? I mean, whoosh, all of that paperwork. All right, here we go. Now, the spindle's actually pretty heavy uh, in comparison to everything else in the box. The spindle's by far the heaviest part of this whole thing and uh here we go so like i said i was holding this out to the very end and uh let's go ahead and open this up and uh nothing says like a great youtube video like seeing the back of my neck so uh awesome camera there doing that and oh oh yeah yeah you're not actually gonna get to see it yet it's just it's just paper um and we think we're going to get a reveal. I think I'm going to give you a reveal. Look, I'm even hiding with my shoulder. So what will you get? What will happen next? Oh, psych out again. No reveal. Now I'm just messing with you guys. Actually, so that's a nice Uline um, uh, anti-moisture uh, wrap in it. So it's going to keep it from, from having uh, rust issues or anything. Uh, and here's the back of this sucker. Um, you've, you've got your air in, air out, and your uh, your connector for the spindle, um, for the spindle arm. The, the surfacing is great. It's an aluminum block and it's really well surfaced. Um, super smooth. I like the pattern in it. Um, I just like machine marks. So maybe they know people like machine marks. So it's not tumbled or cleaned up in any way. On the other side, it looks like you're a, a, a nice spindle. The bearings move well and they should. This is the, I did get the, um, the uh, ceramic bearing. So this one is the 30C, which is a 24,000 RPM. Really, it's the bearings is the factor on that. But 24,000 RPM versus 18,000. I don't think I'm going to run it at 24. I think I'm going to run it mostly under 20. But I figure 24 gives me headroom, right? So um, bearings will last longer if you don't run them at their max. So here we are. It's beautiful blue. Um, there is more. You can feel the texture on the on the mounting plate. Uh, it, so I think they surfaced it and then they actually came back and, and, and put a little texture to it rather than just letting it be completely smooth. The top was completely smooth. So I know they can machine them smooth. So I think it was an active choice. Um, for those that have CNC router parts, uh, if you have a CNC router part mounting plate, one of the ones after they started shipping um, their own spindles, the spindle uh, bolt pattern is the same. So it'll actually work. Uh, it works just fine. So, right. So this is your, there's your, your bottom is up high and your top and right. So there, yeah, there we go. Now we're flipped, right? So that, that six pattern is actually the same. So there's the six pattern. If you hold it over and I'm looking down and you can't see, but I promise the bolt pattern works. In fact, we'll, we'll go ahead and before this video is up, we'll go ahead and, and, uh, stick this on the machine. So, um, that's nice. If you happen to have a CNC router parts machine, you, you likely don't need to do anything. You can, this is a bolt on replacement. Um, obviously the ATC wiring is all new. Um, but yeah, so 
air goes in, it spins well. Don't do that with a spindle. I should, really shouldn't have done that. Like, um, nice, nice little bit of uh, uh, engraving that you're not allowed to see because my face is there. It goes, yeah, there you go. So nice little bit of uh, S30C engraving there. A little bit of uh, cleanness. Um, and then uh, you can see it in my thumb. I think I'm gonna flip it over so you can actually see it. Um, but they uh, they do a little bit of fiber laser as well. Um, I can't speak to run out yet. I can't speak to any of those details yet. Um, won't know them until I use it. But here we go, right? And then there's that American flag. So this is an American made, right? So I'm a pull. I'm a channel little Tyson American made. Boom, right? So. It's kind of funny. So my shop ends up being 100% American made on the router side. So right, so we're sitting with uh, uh, American made servos, American made spindle, American made power supply for the servos, American made um, aluminum extrusions, and American designed uh, CNC router parts Pro uh, 4896, right? So it's basically an American made machine. And then on the other side of my shop, my mill, all Chinese, right? So that's kind of funny, a uh, little personal, like silliness involved there. But there, there you have it. Um, let's go ahead and uh, so one of the things they talk about is uh, there's this is air cooled. Um, if you run it a whole lot, they make a water block for the bottom because apparently, if you're running hours and hours and hours, if you're running production runs with this with this, you'll want the water block. But he said for for my kind of usage, which is a couple hours here or there, um, you know, because I'm a hobbyist, uh, don't do this for a living, um, that I wouldn't need the water block. But if you're doing this all the time, you might get that water block. And a water block you can order after the fact. So I could, if I really like take off on some product and need to spend a bunch of time running this machine, um, this this guy eight hours a day, I'd, I'd get that. I'd go ahead and do that. Um, so, right, power, there's your power plug. And then, so one of these pressurizes the tool changer compartment uh, to keep dust and stuff out of it. And then the other one actually does the tool changing. So what ends up happening is you relieve pressure from the tool changing environment, put pressure to the actual power draw bar, which opens up the clamp. You switch tools and then you release power that closes the clamp back up and then you repressurize. You don't have to, like the power draw bar doesn't require uh, pressure on the off side to keep it closed but that keeps dust and stuff out. Uh, at least that's what it's explained to me. Uh, so that's how that works. Uh, and then you'll need, so you need a solenoid for that. Um, there's a solenoid I got just off of Amazon or whatever. Not a big deal. Um, those are the vents, an A and B side. So it's a hundred, hundred pound pressure to operate the power draw bar. Um, so you, you don't need a hundred pounds going to the pressurized side, but I'm just going to have one solenoid and, and run both sides off of that. So there you have it. Um, let's go ahead and, and mount this sucker up. I'm doing a lot of talking that's not really useful. All right, so here we are. Let's go ahead and get this sucker mounted up. I'm gonna use a little bit of Loctite. These are aluminum threads. That body is aluminum. Um, so the breakdown is aluminum at the very top, aluminum blue, obviously anodized aluminum. Then you've got stainless steel collar, aluminum body. I'm sure they're still going through the middle of that body. And then you have your still lower. I'm sure the aluminum is is for structural support and stuff and not actually like where your bearings are mounted. That seems bad. So if you're not familiar with the CNC router parts, it actually uh, self tramps. So I don't have to, well, you can tram it on the machine. So I don't have to be super precise. That's great. I can mount the sucker up, get it on the machine and then tram it later. So I um, just have to be within a margin of error, uh, which is a pretty wide margin of error actually. It's quite a few degrees. So we're gonna get this wired up. I am gonna go ahead and Loctite these things. It's gonna get a bunch of vibration. So. There's no reason not to go ahead and, and just give it a touch of Loctite. Um, officially, these things are 5 8 deep, but uh, they're, the threads are actually deeper than that. I measured uh, one inch deep threads, um, and these are uh, 25 millimeter, um, eight by 1.25, um, and then they lose a, they lose eight millimeters to the plate. The plate's 16 millimeter plate and they lose about eight millimeters. Um, that head just barely fits. It does fit, that's what's important, but it just barely fits. Um, and these are just nothing special. These are standard screws from Lowe's um, with a six millimeter uh, Allen wrench. So we're just gonna get these suckers put on real quick and then we're gonna go over to the CNC 
uh, and uh, get this mounted actually on the table or on the on the gantry. All right, let's get this mounted up. I was talking about this that pivotable. This is that pivoting um, trammable later uh, mounting. So that's a pivot pivot bolt there, and then you've got two bolts, a left and right bolt, uh, and so that that's pretty straightforward. The left that that bottom bolt there has got a, a horizontal oblong shape. That top bolt there on the opposite side has got a vertical. Those are kind of your extremes. It's the maximum amount of uh, rotation you can get is those two. The difference between those two bolts, and then uh, there's this cam bolt here um, so it's an off-center cammed bolt and that bolt gives you your rotation it's actually a lot of rotation a lot more than you think it's it's more than plenty to tram up this machine it's a 19 millimeter head anyways uh, this has been the s30c uh, starter kit unboxing liking what I've seen so far obviously I don't know everything won't until I actually get it cutting which requires a bunch of other work to be done um, you know as always if you like what you saw thumbs up if you didn't thumbs down Please uh, subscribe and hit that notify button. And I'm not kidding, John or Aaron Grinsmo, if you guys got to hear, jhandel at gmail.com. I totally, I totally want a Norseman. I'm not kidding. For reals. Please. Don't make me use my kitchen knives anymore, man. It's, a, it's disgraceful. I'm shameful. It's sad. Bye, guys.